Hi and welcome to my channel. In this video I will be showing you how to replace a fuel and air filter in an ML320 CDI, so diesel. Also if you did enjoy the video and it did help you out, um, please give it a thumbs up and would appreciate if you could subscribe. Thanks a lot. So I started by removing the clamps on the fuel lines. I thought these were not reusable, but looking further into them, they, they are. I used a pair of needle nose pliers and a flathead screwdriver to slowly pry it together and pry it off. And then they just come off. After that, I remove the air intake system so removing from the turbo and the two air filters after successfully removing the three flathead screws um, two on the air filters and one on the turbo uh, move on to the PCV valve and pry up the connector, the little tab, and push the tab in and pull out. And that should re release the connector. After that, disconnect the two MAF sensors. So you push on the side of the clips and pull out. After removing the two MAF sensor plugs, move on to releasing the air filter housing or air intake system from the two air filters and the turbo. Remember to remove the PCV hose which is where you pried off that sensor earlier. Next I'm going to use an E11 Torx bit, so it's an E-Torx to remove the fuel filter. So there are three bolts holding the fuel filter in place with a bracket. This bracket has to be transferred to the new filter as the new filters do not come with this. After removing all bolts, remove this plug which is the water sensor. So you just has a push tab and pull and also the fuel line. They should just pull off. They might be quite uh, tough to pull off depending on how long ago the fuel filter was replaced. I replaced it with a MAN filter. Um, you can see the exact number there. Make sure the two filters are the same. And I also received a gasket and a new prime screw for the when when bleeding the fuel filter. So I went ahead and started unscrewing all of the water sensor. 
So just removing the two T Torx bits, the T20. After that, just twist it slightly um, to one side and then it pries it off. Make sure you keep all components clean. Um, you don't want sand in the fuel filter and going into your injectors. Remove the two O-rings that you'll be replacing with new ones that are on the water sensor. Um, or most filters would come with this. When putting them on, I like to lubricate them with a little bit of diesel um, and also when installing them, do the same thing. Just put a little bit of diesel on them and put them in. After installing the water sensor, align it with the two holes and insert the two T-Torx, tighten it up. Also the old filter had a little bracket, um, that plastic bracket that is not needed on this particular filter as it has its own support bracket on the fuel line. Next, I'm going to be replacing the entire prime screw. This is used in order to bleed the fuel filter and let all the air out of the fuel filter when you install it. Um, I'll show you how to do that at the end. So now I'm going to reinstall the fuel filter. You need to remove the bracket from the old fuel filter, like I said earlier, and install it on the new fuel filter. Do not tighten the Allen bolt because it will you might not align the bolts with where they go in the engine bay and the bracket. After doing that, connect the water sensor plug and check for any contaminants in the fuel lines if you did not tape them up. I like to tape them up just to be sure nothing gets in there uh, when working on the fuel filter. After attaching all hoses and the water sensor, start aligning the fuel filter with the block and position all brackets in their original position. And install bolts.
remember to tighten the Allen bolt on the uh, bracket also. After installing the fuel filter and bolting it up, position the fuel line clamps in the right place um, in order to close them again. You will need a set of pliers um, in order to close them shut. It's very simple. After installing the fuel filter, we will remove the air filter boxes. This is done by the two screws on each, two bolts, sorry, on each air filter. After removing them, remo remember to remove the intake tubes that run to the air filter boxes. There's one on the left and one on the right side. So this car has two air filters. Removing the right hand airbox is much easier um, to remove than the left hand side due to the firewall on the left hand side. On the right side you can see the locating pins, you need to take note of that when reinstalling. It's not just the right hand side that has them, it's also the left hand side. Once again, remember to remove the two intake tubes, they just pull out from the air boxes that run to the front of the car. Also on the left hand side you need to remove the firewall panel which is held on by two bolts. This will allow you to easily access the left hand air filter and not damage the firewall panelling. The filters are held on with locating pins so they may be a bit tough to pull out. Just jiggle them a bit and they will release. The left hand side also has a sensor on it, I forgot to mention. Just remove that, it's very simple to just pull it out. You can see it on the top there. Now we're going to open the airbox panels. They also have T-Torx bits holding them together. The old filter was quite dirty and I replaced that with a man air filter once again. Sorry about the footage and not showing the ran properly, my tripod had broke. After replacing the air filter, um, tighten all the screws again and move on to the next air filter box.
Now we're going to be reinstalling the two air boxes. Take note of the locating pins under the air filter boxes and return them in the same order they were removed. Next, remember to return the intake tubes. These do not have anything holding them such as a clamp. They just slide into one another. So after connecting the left and right hand air boxes, including the firewall panel that we removed earlier, um, and all the sensors, so connect the, all plugs that were disconnected, we're done with the air filters. So now we're going to prime the fuel system by connecting a hose to the prime uh, screw and slightly opening it up. This will allow fuel to escape when we turn the key to the on position. Do not crank the motor just to the on position and this will let fuel and air out of the filter. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did please remember to subscribe and like the video. If you have any questions please leave a comment. Thank you.